listed as the natural resource and environment, legal, political and human rights, culture and indigenous knowledge, health and well-being, and entrepreneurship. Having read the draft Timpo Declaration, it would be imprudent of me to offer my comments on the substantive issues you have listed, but because along with the substance must also come the strategies, would you allow me please to be so bold as to offer you my personal reflections? In the beginning is the word. It is important to name what we want or don't want. For example, personal is political. Gender, women's rights are human rights. If we can't name it, we can't get it. It's as simple as that. Deconstruct to construct. Alas, as women, there is so much baggage we need to throw out. Deconstructing is the necessary first step for empowerment because as women, we have had bad scripts written for us from the day we were born. An empowered woman never feels guilty. An empowered woman does not try to be a superwoman. That's only for the comic books and the movies. Unless we stop being superwomen, our men will not be fully human. Don't agonize, organize. An empowered woman honors diversity. An empowered woman has the capacity for intelligent rage. We must feel a sense of outrage against injustice and violence, a sense of outrage that leads to political action. An empowered woman claims power. When you walk out here today, you are going to take steps to claim power because that is what mountain women need. And lastly, an empowered woman says, no more waiting. And on that keynote, thank you very much. More power to mountain women. Meeting of this nature has ever happened in South Asia, where indigenous people, they are themselves an agenda and they are dealing with their agenda. So it's really, you know, an opportunity to really listen to them and to learn from them and the kind of uh, discourses that's taking place. Uh, what the women are really talking about, you know, their legal rights, they're talking about, uh, you know, their the patenting rights, or their traditions has to be preserved, but they want to share, but, you know, it should belong to them. So, and they are coming out with some concrete uh, suggestion and recommendation. So I'm sure that what's going to come out will not be a shopping list. It'll be some concrete plans, workable, practical uh, plans. We are calling it a meeting and celebrating uh, mountain women. So I'm looking at like three kind of things, outputs as we call it, results. Uh, one would be of course the declaration itself, you know, and which will be practical and taken forward, forward moving strategies. And the other would be networks. And I see lots of networks, you know, and these networks should not just be email networks. They should really be, you know, at the ground kind of a network that should be there. And other is, I look at is, there are some best practices that one hears about. And I think documenting that would be another very interesting area that others could learn from it. The film that we presented, that we screened yesterday, it was, the title was Taller in the Mountains. And basically it talks about the issues regarding the mountain women of northern Pakistan and Chitral. It tells the stories of women who have been working as social organizers, women who are working in their traditional roles and taking up the challenge of, you know, um, taking charge of their own development. And as you've seen, that women have come a long way and they still have a long way to go. I mean, the road is still difficult for them. Through the process of social organization, the, this women 
development program, it has emerged as an organic process. And slowly and steadily, women are taking charge of their lives, um, breaking away from their traditional roles and, you know, working as entrepreneurs, working as social organizers. The problem that often faces all those isolated mountain populations, particularly the women, is they're not used to quality control measures. There is nobody to certify if they have a genuine organic product or something that's handmade. And I was wondering if from the point of view of International Fund, you felt it's possible. The UK, which specializes in uh, certification and quality control for um, uh, organically grown aromatic products and uh, medicinal plants. And also in Nepal, we have, we have an example of uh, collaborating with private companies like Tabor Nepal in the uh, Midwest and Far West, where we, early on we'll be linking the producers with uh, with a manufacturing company so that uh, we get rid of uh, all the middlemen. That's the key, you know, if we can get the premium value of mountain products uh, recognized and linked to the market in a sustainable way, so that instead of all these women producing these uh, crafts or producing a little bit of specialized medicinal plant or product, uh, they can have a, a, a way for their products to be recognized, certified, a direct link with the market, some information access channels so that as the market changes and designs needs a little bit of changing or people move to new products, that they can take advantage of that. Then. Right now, when they just earn that, uh, you know, 50 cents a day for their extra work, uh, it could easily move to $2 a day, or $3 a day, and, and that's enough to make all the difference for their kids going to school and they're being able to invest in, in their own health and future. <laughs> Nata, get it down, that's a good